Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. So, remember a time back in, when I just started my residency, I started my residency in internal medicine, which is for adults. And a couple months in, I started to second guess my decision, and I was like, okay, maybe I don't want to treat adults. And growing up, I always had a affinity towards children and, and enjoyed like playing with little kids. And, um, and so I was like, okay, may, well, maybe I'll do pediatrics. And so I started to take time and, I don't know why it's clicking in and out. I started to take time and shadow in pediatrics, thinking that I might switch next year, even though I'd lose a year long term, I thought it'd be good. And, and as I shadowed in pediatrics and got to understand more of what it's like, I realized that, well, I like the kids, the parents were crazy. And I didn't want to deal with the parents who were calling at all hours of the night, worried about, you know, the littlest of things. And granted, like I've done that with my own pediatrician. So what I thought was good in theory, the reality of it was a bit more challenging than, than I would have liked. And so stayed the course and went through internal medicine. But it's the case in many things in life where the reality of what we, or what we envision is very different than the reality of it, right? We like things sometimes in theory or envision it in a certain ways, but until you actually get in there, you may not experience it the same way that you envisioned it. And we also see this in, in our careers, right? We pick a certain career path and, and we study hard and we get there and then all of a sudden we're in there and we're like, ah. Oh, I didn't realize I had to do this. Uh, like this was part of it. And nobody told me about that. So many things in life are like that. And I think one of the things that's similar to that or resonates with that idea is also service, right? Service has a nice ring to it. People like the idea of helping others. People enjoy helping others and doing things because they feel good too. But there's also a reality to service where there's a little bit of a grind. And I remember just uh, the other week when we had, last week when we had our uh, mission trip here and as elementary kids, they were put to work. They were tired. They were sweaty. They like did a lot of labor. They're up late and, and um, waking up early. And if I told them like, okay, do you want to come for three days and you're going to be tired, you're going to be thirsty, there's not going to be that much like free time and you're going to be working hard outside. Like what elementary school kid is going to sign up for that, right? It's not camp. But yet they came and at the end of, of the trip, you ask them, okay, how was the trip? And they're like, it was awesome. But the service, the reality of it, like when we talk about it, it's difficult, okay? It's challenging. And as a church, we're now in the fast of the apostles, and the church and the focus of the church is looking at the ministry. And a lot of the readings have to do with the ministry and the service. And when we look at today's gospel specifically, today's gospel speaks about the challenges in ministry, right? It speaks about the challenges in ministry. And if I could give you like a quick rundown of all the challenges that, that the gospel of today speaks about, there's, there's quite a bit, right? Starts off by saying, love your enemies. Then it says, do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you, right? If you get slapped on the cheek, turn the other cheek. If somebody asks for your cloak, give them your tunic too. And, you know, give, but don't ask or expect anything in return. When you look at this list of of what service is like, of what it is to sacrifice for the other, it's not the most enticing list, right? It's not an easy list either to do all these things. And if from the get-go, this is what you told like somebody's service is like, very few people would sign up, right? But, but even though there are these challenges, even though there's these difficulties, Service is an important part of, of how we live and how we walk on this earth. And while the, how we envision service is nice, when you get in there, you find these challenges. And if you've served for an extended period of time, it always starts out nice. There's always a little honeymoon phase. But then as you get into it, 
it gets rough, right? It gets challenging. You face obstacles. You feel like you're understaffed. You feel like you're, you're pouring a lot of energy and the, and the return is very little, right? There's normal challenges that come into the picture. And it's when you hit these challenges, right, that people kind of either stick through it or they can, you know, say, okay, like I, I've tried and, and now I'm going to back away, right? I've done it because I've done it and it's gotten hard. And so I'm going to take a step back. And this is a normal part of service. This is a normal part that when you serve for a period of time, an extended period of time, you're going to face these challenges. It's not going to be a pathway of roses. But even though we face these challenges, right, and we look at these challenges, and in our mind there's a transaction that's happening. Like I know that service is about giving, and I'm giving, and I'm, I'm giving to God. I'm giving my time, I'm giving my energy, in some situations, I'm giving my finances, I'm giving resources. We give in service. And there is a giving back in service. There is something that we gain back in service. But the thing is, it's not a one for one. It's not like I give time and then I get time back. It's not like I give like finances and then I get something in return. Or I give, you know, you know my energy and all of a sudden like, like I have more energy, a lot of times like I'm, I'm leaving service fatigue. So we give and there is something that comes back, but it's not in like a one-to-one -one ratio, right? It's not like what I give, I get back. But yet the Lord gives, the Lord gives. And if we look at today's gospel or the, uh, the Acts of the, uh, the reading from the Acts, there's a story of where Paul was serving and he was getting tired. And he was serving and he went into the synagogue and he preached and the reception of the message was very difficult. And this wasn't his first missionary trip. We're getting like, I think this is the second or third um, missionary trip where he's preaching and then there's a big rejection and Paul gets discouraged. Paul gets discouraged and he said, all right, forget it. I'm no longer going to preach to the Jews. I'm going to go and preach to the Gentiles. So he faced it as well. He faced the challenges that are a part of ministry. And I read, I want to read his response in Acts 19. All right, because this is how the Lord gave back to Paul. Paul gave time, gave energy, he gave finances, he gave everything. All right. And the Lord spoke to Paul by night in a vision. And he says, Do not be afraid, but speak, and do not keep silent, for I am with you, and no one will attack you to hurt you, for I have many people in this city. Right? Paul was giving and the Lord gave back something that was very, very special and unique. He gave him comfort and peace of mind to know that, nope, don't worry, I will take care of you. I will be here for you. And I will protect you. And I'll provide what you need. Oftentimes in, in ministry and in service, when we get into difficulties, we start to really second guess ourselves. We start to get frustrated. We start to wonder like, hey, God, where are you? And when we hang on there enough, God will give us direction. And in Paul's situation, he said, okay, Paul, I know you're discouraged. I know you don't want to preach to the Jews anymore, but I don't want you to be silent. And don't worry, I will protect you. I have people in this place that you don't know of who are going to come and it's going to help you in the ministry. There's a peace of mind that Paul got. There's a comfort in knowing that he should continue in the path. And so much, like what a gift it is to have a peace of mind. What a, what a gift it is to have reassurance that I should continue to toil in the field that I'm toiling, that I should continue to persevere in the service. And this is the currency of God. Like we give in one currency, right? And he gives us in another. And that's the beauty of service. We give and he gives back but it's very, very different in the way that he gives back. How many of us would love peace of mind? How many of us would love knowing that we're on the right track, even though the track is difficult, even though the road is difficult, but knowing that like, ah, uh, God wants me to continue to, to move forward. How many of us would love living in, in, in a situation where even though I feel like I've limited resources, I know and I trust that God is going to provide rather than looking at, at the little I have and feeling anxious about it. These are the gifts that God gives us 
when we persevere in ministry. Right? So we give, but God gives back more. And if we look at the very end of this gospel, right? For several verses, St. Luke is describing right, what it is to give in ministry and the challenges. But he ends by adding these verses, right? He says, give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put in your bosom. This is the promise of God. This is his promise to us, is that when we give, and it is difficult, that he will provide in other ways. He will give us a blessing. He will give us reassurance. He will give us a renewed sense of energy and, and zeal for what it is we are doing. This is his promise to us. He calls us to the mission field. He tells us it is going to be hard. You are going to face challenges. It's the reality of it. You do it long enough, and this is what you're going to face. But I'm going to be with you. I'm to, going to comfort you. I'm going to pull resources from places that you could not have imagined before. I'm going to give you a renewed sense of energy. I'm going to give you peace of mind in, pursue, in, in continuing the journey. And we see this happening in so many of those who have followed him faithfully. One of the, you know, when we look at St. Paul specifically, and we look at the very end of his ministry, he's writing letters and he's writing the most, you know, beautiful letters, but he's in prison and he's feeling alone and he's feeling like left. But at the same time, he knows that the Lord is with him. He's finding comfort in knowing that, okay, his journey is coming to an end and that he's going to receive the reward. There's so many gifts that God gives us when we pursue him in service. And so as a church and the mind of the church is focused on service and is focused on, on the ministry and fasting for the ministry, I want everybody to kind of look at themselves and, okay, see where you are in ministry and where you are in your service. And it's not like, it's, I don't want you to think narrow-mindedly to, well, I'm either serving in Sunday school or I'm not serving in Sunday school. There's so many different ways to serve. We all serve and give in different ways. Okay? And each way that we give has its own set of challenges. But if we're facing those challenges, this is a time for us to pray for God to give us the strength and the energy to continue to persevere and to trust knowing that when I persevere, okay, when, I, when I work through the challenges that are before me, that he will give. He will give in different ways. It's in a different currency, right? But he promises to give when we sacrifice. So everybody think of where it is you are in, in service and ministry and giving and where the challenges are. Say, Lord, like, help me to continue. Knowing that you will give. Give me peace of mind. Give me energy. Whatever it is that I need, pray that it comes from the hand of the Lord. So we'll take our, our minute of silence to think about that and glory be to God for our